Greetings everyone! Before we get into anything, this video will not be about Star Wars The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker, though I will reference them at least once or twice. I think that I finally found an area in Star Wars that I wouldn't mind discussing. In this video, I'm going to talk about the planetary ecosystems in Star Wars. Star Wars is known for having some cool looking planets such as Mustafar, a planet mostly covered with lava, Kamino, a planet mostly covered with water, Naboo, an Earth-like planet with an underwater society, Tatooine and Jakku are all desert, Hoth equals snow, Coruscant's a big city, Endor's a forest moon, Cantabite's a huge casino planet, Crate is all salt. I think you get the idea where I'm going with this. Even though most of those planets are cool, I think that some people would like to see some more creative planet designs. I love most of the planets in Star Wars, but even looking at real life, there is so much more that they could add to make them more unique. But before we get into all that, it would seem that planets only having one ecosystem is not uncommon in sci-fi. In Stargate, many of the planets they visited were one note with not too much to explore as far as the diverse landscapes would go. Sometimes they would step through the gate and arrive on a planet, walk around for a little bit, and then decide that the planet isn't really worth it based on just one walk alone. In Stargate Atlantis, they point out this type of thing like it's kind of a joke. You know, they're like, oh, let's just go walk around and oh, there's not much here, let's just pack it in when clearly there could be a lot more on the planet, but that was in Stargate Atlantis when they actually make that a joke. Usually they end up stumbling upon some people, places, or things, but the planet usually ends up remaining generic and mostly Earth-like. And yes, for the hardcore Stargate fans, yes, I do remember that the reason that is is because the ancients that built the Stargates built most of them on planets that were similar to Earth at the time that they constructed them. Anyway, I think that the reason that TV shows and movies have simple planets like that is that we won't have a chance to explore most of it. The plot usually drives our characters to one or two locations on a planet in many sci-fi shows and films. So why would you add more to the planet if that's not where the story is going to focus on? So you don't even explore them anyway. For those reasons, I would say that that makes sense as to why the planets are kept as simple as can be. As much as I love many of the fictional planets, I feel that they could improve by adding some real elements into play though. When the Kepler telescope launched in 2009, its main mission was to learn more about exoplanets, planets that are not in our little solar system around our star. By just pointing into one area of space for a few years, the Kepler telescope discovered hundreds of Earth-like planets in the habitable zones of sun-like stars. I love this topic and there are so many planets that they discovered that I'd love to talk about more in the future if you guys are interested. There's this one planet that has a locked orbit around its star, which means that it doesn't rotate. One side is forever hot, the other is forever cold, and the spot where they meet is the spot that can potentially hold some kind of life. The kind of life that lives in liquid water and has more, let's say, Earth-like temperatures, a little warmer. Kind of warm, not too hot, and not too cold. Here's a quote of what the planet just might be like from the NASA website. For a totally tidally locked planet, there is no day or night, only freezing darkness on one side and burning constant sunlight on the other. The Terminator Zone is bathed in constant twilight and would likely be the only place on the planet to potentially be hospitable." End quote. The sky would be in a constant dusk, so it would be dim light, and no normal way to tell how long a day since the planet does not rotate. So just picture it if this puppy was in Star Wars, that would be freaking incredible! Have any of you heard of something called a rogue planet? No? Well, it's a planet that does not orbit a star. It just wanders in space, which can happen due to certain large-scale events or simply some other gravitational pull pulling it away from its star. Some rogue planets are mysterious to how they even wandered off. Some people don't even know why. Just think of something like this being applied in Star Wars. Hell, you can even have like a team on a ship discover a rogue planet from back in the Old Republic, finding remnants of some ancient alien Sith species thousands of years later. Could be tight, you know? Bespin's Cloud City is a great example of a creative choice for a location on a planet, that being a city on a gas giant. They could do something like that on a planet like Venus, but that would be far more dangerous with its lightning and acid storms. However, honestly, that kind of gets me thinking about, like, I don't understand how they build certain structures on such hazardous planets. I guess Mustafar could make sense, like, if you wanted to hide from somebody. It's not exactly a safe place to be, so I guess that could make sense. Something I've wondered for a while is how come they don't do a Star Wars film mostly taking place on one planet? I mean, they make it seem like every planet has just a few cities and that's it. 
You could do a great Star Wars film on one planet and still make it awesome and cool, especially if you have multiple ecosystems on it. Not to mention, you could always explore the planets further in a video game to learn more about the planet. The further that I dive into this topic, the more I peer into a different one. So in the next Star Wars video, I'll talk about the alien creatures. And with that being said, I think that'll end it right about here. Let me know what you think about the planets in Star Wars. Do you think that having multiple ecosystems on the planets can make it a little more interesting? Hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, please like, share, subscribe, and that's it for today, so have a great rest of your day. Hey guys, I'm working on some film projects behind the scenes. If you want to help fund these projects or my channel in general, check out the Patreon and Teespring store. Links are in the description below. Do you want to send me a message or just see what I'm up to? Follow me on Twitter, at the Rookie Critic. I'm on a mission to finally watch some classic and popular films. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to join a watch party. And I also got a mailbox, so if you want to send me movies or comics to review, send it to 3021 Northeast 72nd Drive, Street 9, PMB, 1560, Vancouver, Washington, 98661. Thanks, guys. And cut. That's a wrap.